Hello guys, how are you? The code Holic is here. I decided to do a full list of videos on Ito framework and cover from basic things such as forms, models, controllers, modules, including more advanced stuff like caching, logging, airbuck, and so on. So if you're interested in E2 framework, make sure you are subscribed and hit the bell button to be notified about the new videos. And also let me know in the comment section if you have any topic in your mind. Videos won't be long and we will be focused on one particular topic. If you want to see one video which covers the most common features of the framework, I have an E2 a crash course which is about 100 minutes video and covers the most common features of the framework and we're building a minimalistic blog in this video. You can find the link in the video description. At some point in the series of videos we will build a website and host it on DigitalOcean. Let me answer a few questions and then we can install it and see how it works. What is E2 Framework? E2 Framework is an MVC framework written in a fully object-oriented way in PHP. E2 was released in uh, 2014 and in next year we are expecting E3. What advantages does it have? Security, performance and extensibility are the biggest advantages of, of the framework. Uh, it has a lot of options and provides a lot of built-in features, but if it doesn't give you what you want, you can easily customize, extend the class and add your own functionality. Is it popular? It is in the list of top 5 PHP frameworks. It's not as popular as Laravel and Symfony, but it's pretty popular in, in US and European market, and if we have a look at the following Upwork developers, we can see how much they earn just working on the E2 framework and what are their hour rates, which is quite high. What are its important features? It's written using MVC pattern. It's, it comes with bootstrap out of the box. It has basic and advanced version, where advanced version has two applications, front and backend in single project. It uses PDO with active record and works fine in almost every relational databases, but it also works fine with NoSQL databases such as MongoDB. It provides powerful routing, powerful RESTful API system, it comes with powerful validation, which includes also client-side validation. It has built-in powerful role-based access control system. And it comes with GII, which is a really useful tool for code generation. It gives you a possibility to generate not only models, controllers and forms, but also modules, extensions and the whole CRUD applications with just one click. What are the prerequisites to learn E2 Framework? The framework is written fully in object-oriented way, so that's why you, you need a basic knowledge of PHP and object-oriented programming. I have a full list of uh, videos on PHP object-oriented programming. Uh, if you are interested, you can check out the video description. You need to have basic knowledge of HTML, CSS and JavaScript, and you need to have basic knowledge of databases and SQL. Now let's install the framework and say hello. Before we install the framework, I assume that you have already set up your working environment for PHP. So on Windows you need to install XAMP, which is PHP, MySQL and Apache, and on Linux you need to install LAMPStack, which is Linux, Apache, MySQL and PHP. The preferable way to install the framework is via Composer. If you don't have yet installed Composer, you need to go to the following link and for Windows you need to download Composer Setup exe file and on Linux you need to run this URL uh, and the sudo mv command to download and make the Composer command globally available. Okay, so I have already installed Composer, so I'm going to run the following command Composer create project prefer dist. Okay, so I'm copying the command Go to your favorite folder, I'm going to docs folder and run the following command. Just I want to change the folder, local folder into E2 basic. It will take a couple of minutes until this command downloads the framework itself and all its dependencies. So you probably need to wait a couple of minutes. Okay, so the framework and all its dependencies are already downloaded. So I'm going to open the folder right now using PHPStorm. It's really convenient uh, to work with this ID and it helps me a lot during the development. So I recommend this ID. Okay, so PHPStorm opened and let me go to full screen and let's explore the folder structure. Um, as I already said, the framework is MVC framework, so uh, 
we have three main folders like models, controllers, and views. So these are um, the main folders for MVC frameworks. Okay, you will probably meet them in other frameworks also. Okay, what are other folders? Let's start with the first one, assets. Um, inside assets, there are special classes called asset bundles, which are responsible for registering CSS and JavaScript files for inside the view. Okay, so we're gonna explore asset bundles much more details in later videos, but that's all what you need to know right now. Comments. Comments are uh, just console application uh, comments. Inside config folder, there are uh, all files basically are for configuration. Some of them are for tests, some of them are for console, and some of them are for the web. So this is the config file. We're going to explore this config file also uh, in details later. Controllers, as I said, this is the main folder. And here, basically, th there are controllers and the controllers have actions. And the actions are the responsible endpoint end for rendering a uh, view. Mail folder is a place where you save your uh, sending email templates. Models are the folder where you save basically an active record and not only active record, just normal models also. And we're going to explore it also in details. The runtime is the place where um, all user generated files go there, like uh, not user generated, but the framework generated files like uh, cache, logs and, and so on. Okay, so here everything basically is ignored inside the folder except the gitignore file. The tests is a place where tests are written and, and yeah, functional or unit tests. Vagrant is a folder to run your e framework on Vagrant container system. Let me call ups others. Okay, so Vagrant vendor uh, vendor is a folder where all installed packages are saved. Views are the folder uh, where all views are there, and web. I think this is the most uh, key uh, folder right now because it contains the entry script, index.php, and this index.php is responsible to handle all the requests, incoming requests, and create the application instance and run it, and then the application instance will do the rest. And widgets. Widgets are a folder where user interface widgets are saved, created and saved. Okay, let's see the files, the Bower RC, this is the Bower configuration file, gitignore is clear, codeception is for uh, tests, composer, json, log, I hope these are clear. Docker compose is for Docker container system, uh, and the requirements are, I think this is also clear. Vagrant and the, this E file is the uh, command, the PHP file, which is for running a console commands, the commands basically which are under the commands folder. Okay, so now we are going to run the application. So we're going to run PHP E and we're using the E file I just opened. So I'm executing the E file using PHP and I'm running ser serve. Okay, PHP E serve. And this starts the PHP's built-in server on localhost 8080. Okay, I'm gonna open localhost 8080. And here is the framework uh, up and running. And let's navigate between pages. And we see how the URL looks like. The index.php, which is the entry script. And then R. The R refers basically a root. So the root is site and this is the encoded version of slash, so site slash contact, okay? So this is the URL site slash contact is uh, the URL where uh, I am right now on. So if I click about, now I am on site slash about. This is site slash index, and this is site slash login. And the site is the basically controller ID we have site controller here, and the site in the browser is the ID of the controller, and login is the ID of the action. So we have in the site controller, 
we have below action index which is for home page we have action login which is the login action and so on so we have all actions uh, which are available in the application okay so let's create one more action and say hello okay so I'm gonna scroll down and create one more action action hello okay and I'm gonna accept a message also in the argument okay so action hello um, okay let me remove the message and then I will add it um, then I want to render a view render hello view okay and let's go to the views folder and uh, here we see the site folder and the site folder is named because of the controller so the controller is site controller which means that the controller has id uh, site and then here we have the same folder as the id of the controller and we need to create here about php file uh, not about but a hello php okay so this is the hello php and we can create h1 tag there hello from e2 let's save this and go to the browser and we need to change the root into site slash hello hello from e2 that's it so we created this uh, action in view file and we can use it let's accept an argument in the controller like i said message and we can pass this message to the view file and make it available inside view okay so i'm gonna the second argument to the render method is basically an associative array where the key is the um, new variable name which will be available inside the view file and the value is the value and i'm gonna pass a message there so i can i can pass here msg and inside the hello this msg will be available right here php echo msg okay let's save this semicolon let's go to the browser and refresh the page and we see here a bad request missing required parameters message so we need to uh, pass the message okay so we need to put there a message query parameter message will be I don't know test okay message will be test let's hit the enter and i see here hello from e and then test that's the end of this video thank you guys for watching it and see you in the next video